Thank you, Lord. Thanks, guys. Y'all can be seated. Glory to God. Christians ought to be the most joyful people on the planet. We're saved, healed, filled, delivered, on our way to heaven. Why should we sorrow? Hmm? Why should we be sad? Why should we be? We shouldn't. We ought not be. It's a bad witness. So whatever it is that's been bugging you, been keeping you down, holding you down, let's shake it off. Let's let the Lord free us and heal us and be a bright shining light for Him that when people see us, they see the goodness of God. And then if they want to know about it, we can smile and say, yes, He will do the same thing for you. Amen. He loves you too. Would you open the Scriptures tonight to John? The fifth chapter, the ushers have extra Bibles. They'd be glad to let you use one of ours. Hold up your hand real high if you didn't bring a Bible this evening. And turn with us to John chapter 5. So we finished reading the New Testament through. Amen. Those of you that uh, stayed with it, are you glad you did? Those of you that stayed with it, would you encourage other people to... To, to get on it and stay with it. If you read one chapter a day, just one, Monday through Friday, in one year's time exactly, you've read the New Testament through in its entirety. You know, a lot of Christians have gone all their life and never done that. And that's not, that's not okay. There really is no excuse for that. People say, well, that's strong, Brother Keith. You want me to say it again? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The Word of God should be absolute priority in a believer's life. And there, there's just nothing that will do you more good than feeding on the Word on a regular basis. And I believe the Lord directed us to do this, so please, uh, if you hadn't got your reading card already, we got a little card, index card, fits right in your Bible there, tells you what chapter and what day. doesn't take long, one chapter. And so, uh, please, uh, go back to the information area, get yours, and Monday morning, let's hit it together. And we'll all be on the same page, hearing the same things, thinking the same things. It'll strengthen you. How many can testify that uh, even though you've read maybe that chapter numerous times before, uh, I know myself, some of these, uh, especially the New Testament, some of these chapters I've read many times. And going over them again, I just, I'm, I'm excited about the book of Revelation right now. I just, oh man, I, I just, I go over them uh, several times, just the same chapter and the same, and you're just seeing things. And what happens, as you grow over a period of years, you see and hear things you never saw the first time you read that, or the third time, or the 20th time. This is, this book is not like other books. It is a living word. Anything that's alive, you're going to see different sides of it. It's, it's alive. So please, uh, hook up with us, get your reading card, and we'll start together. And uh, you'll be so glad that you did. It'll feed you. Uh, it'll help you. Besides that, it'll do you good. John 5, are you there? Tell me what tonight is. Anybody know? Tonight is healing night. Mrs. Why tonight? How you know tonight? <laughs> well, really, every night's healing night with the Lord, but uh, it's not just all up to Him. Our faith is a big part of it, so we can, it's okay for us to have times when we emphasize feeding our faith for a specific area. So uh, uh, we'll stir ourselves up and. When other people are believing together, it makes it easier to receive. Yes. You're just standing by yourself uh, in your bedroom trying to believe and deal with symptoms. Or you come into a place where a bunch of believers are believing God and the presence of God is real strong. makes it easier yes. to receive. It's just a fact. And didn't the Bible say one would put a thousand to flight? Two would put 10,000. You don't just uh, double. It's it's a multiplication of effect when we join our faith together. I want you to look, please, with me at a passage of Scripture in John 
chapter 5, a healing that occurred. And please believe with me. And uh, you don't have to wait till a, uh, a certain time in the service. The Lord begin to minister something to you. Just receive it. The scripture said he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. I had the privilege of ministering at healing school, Brother Kenneth Hagin Ministries Healing School, for years. And in the morning, we'd have little small groups, uh, sometimes 10, 15, 20 people. Afternoon, we'd have hundreds. And uh, so the mornings were very casual. And uh, I, I know uh, uh, one, one day I was about second row in the little auditorium, of course, much, much smaller than this. And uh, uh, I was talking about believing you receive. And this lady was sitting right here in front of me. And, and we had, we, it was very informal. And we told people they could ask questions. And, and I, right in the middle of my sentence, she said, excuse me, this is right here. I said, yes. She said, are you saying, I just believe I receive it. I just take it and I've got it. I said, that's exactly right. She said, okay. (laughs) She came up after the service, and she said, look at me. I said, yes, because I don't really know what I'm looking for. And she said, what do you think? I said, you look nice. She said, no, no, you don't understand. She said, my, the, she, she smiled and she, I said, yeah, he looked nice. She said, no, the whole right side of my face didn't work. Oh. I'd had a stroke and none of this worked. She smiled again. She said, how do I look? I said, you look wonderful. <laughs> it just looks perfect to me. She said, it's working perfect. Nobody laid hands on her. Nobody prayed for her. When she said, is that, is that how it works? I said, yeah. She said, Okay. <laughs> And she right there in the chair. She just believed I received my healing. She just believed she took it. I know another time uh, uh, administering a similar situation. And uh, a fellow come up from the back. And he said, look. <laughs> I said, what? He said, look. He said, look here. And he showed me uh, notes that he had taken. And uh, again, I didn't know exactly what I was looking for. And he, he said, I couldn't use that hand this morning. He said, I wrote all these notes with it. (laughs) The Lord sent his word, and he's just sitting back in the chair. The Lord sent his word and healed him and delivered him. I'm not the healer. No man is. Jesus is the healer. Right? His word heals and delivers. How many believe his healing power is here right now? He is, just like his saving power. Would you say the saving power of the Lord is not here because nobody's being born again down at the altar right at the moment? Nope. Could you say that? No. no. His saving power is here. Yes. If somebody acted on it, they would be born again. Yes. Well, did you know also his healing power, his delivering power is here yes. right now? You know, the Bible said uh, on one occasion Jesus was ministering, and the Scripture said the power of the Lord was present to heal. And the room was filled with some religious leaders. And and far as we know, none of them got healed, and yet the power was there to heal them. And yet the guys came in from the outside, you remember, for bringing the, the paralyzed man, climbed up on top of the roof, tore off the roof, let, he got healed. And yet the power was there to heal the people in the house. That man wasn't in the house. But he had enough faith to know he needed to get in there, and he tore off the roof and got it. He got healed. Uh, We have no record that the rest of them did. So just because the power was present to heal doesn't mean they automatically got healed. Or that they even believed it was there. Just like the saving power. The power to be born again is always here. And the healing delivering power is always here. Can you say amen? Amen. In John, the uh, fifth chapter, and the first verse... Let's pray and release our faith. Father, we thank you so much for your precious, holy word. We thank you for your wonderful, holy spirit. We, as much as we know, we we believe on you. 
And we yield ourselves as an act of our faith and will. We yield ourselves. I say, speak through me, Lord. And speak to our hearts. Minister to our minds and our spirits and our bodies. Help us all to cooperate with you, to yield to you tonight and receive the fullness of what you have for us, what you desire to minister to us in Jesus' name. Everybody said out loud, I'm a believer. I'm a, believer. I'm a, receiver. I'm a receiver in Jesus' name. In Jesus. John 5, verse 1, says, After this there was a feast of the Jews. Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said to him, Wilt thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool, but while I'm coming, another steps down before me. Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up your bed, and walk. (laughs) And immediately the man was made whole, and took up his bed, and walked. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say, Glory to God. God. Do you believe it, friends? Oh, thank you, Master. Well, the Jews got upset, the the religious leaders of the Jews, verse 10, and they said, It's the Sabbath day. It's not lawful for you to carry your bed. Wonder what he thought. (laughs) It, It is sad how blind. So many religious people are. How can it be that you're looking at a miracle? A man who suffered for nearly four decades is free and healed and whole. And all you care about is he's breaking one of your church rules. How can you be so blind and so calloused? And not care. Even if you didn't understand it. You ought to say, well, do we have to talk about the rule right now? Look, the man's healed. Let's, let's be glad. <laughs> but see, it's showing a heart that's not right. And uh, they said, it's not lawful. He said, he that made me whole, verse 11. He told me, take up your bed and walk. And they said, what man is, is he that said to you, take up your bed and walk? He didn't know he was healed. He didn't know who it was. So he didn't even know who ministered to him. He didn't know it was Jesus. And Jesus had conveyed himself away, a multitude being in that place. And so Jesus ministered to him, and then he's gone. And uh, afterward, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, Behold, you're made whole. Sin no more, lest the worst thing come upon you. How many know that yielding to wrong things can open the door for problems in your life? Problems in your mind. Problems in your body. The man departed and told the Jews it was Jesus that had made him whole. And therefore did the Jews persecute Jesus and sought to to slay him. Kill him. They want to kill him. Because a man's gotten healed. (laughs) Because he had done these things on the Sabbath day. Now, uh, I want to talk some about the healing that occurred and how it occurred. Because the scripture tells us that many, many healings and miracles that happened in Jesus' ministry are not recorded. But the ones that are were handpicked by the Holy Spirit. 
because they apply to every generation. Every time there are great truths that we need to learn from these. And so let's see what happened and how it happened. The, the Bible said there was a pool at Bethesda. Now, Bethesda means house of mercy. So that lets us know already what we're going to see. We're going to see some mercy. You know, oftentimes people would come, more than once you see in the Scriptures, people came that were sick and, and, and oppressed and they'd cry out, Son of David, have mercy on me. And you know, every one of those people that did that left delivered, left healed. You know, mercy uh, is not justice. Hmm? If you get mercy, it means you didn't deserve it. Have mercy on, on me. Uh, you could say it like this means, Lord, don't let me stay in what I have sown or what I have brought on myself. And Lord, let the good healing that I don't deserve come on me. Lord, have mercy on me. So many times people say, well, you know, I had a fellow tell me one time, well, you know, back before I got saved, man, I drank and drank and did drugs and, and I did all this wild stuff and, and I'm, I'm, I'm older now and, and I'm paying for it, you know, you just, uh, uh, I sowed it, I guess I have to reap it. No, have you heard about mercy? <laughs> mercy means Jesus reaped what you sowed. If he didn't, then you're going to hell. I'm not going. How about you? And I'm not going, not because I didn't sow it, the wages of sin is death. I'm not going because he reaped what I sowed. Well, he also reaped the results of my broken peace. He also reaped the results of my broken body. Didn't he? The chastisement of our peace was upon Him. And with His stripes, we are healed. Glory. That's mercy. Somebody say mercy. Say it again. Mercy. Mercy. Thank God for mercy. Thank God for mercy. Somebody needs to be saying thank God for mercy. What's the answer? For blatant stupidity. Mercy. <laughs> Mercy. <laughs> What's the remedy? For hard headedness. Disobedience. Mercy. The Lord told you not to do it. He sent three people by and told you don't do it. He had the preacher preach on it five Sundays in a row. Don't do it. But no, no, you went right on and waded out into it, and boy, it, uh, how it messed everything up. Mm, and now the, 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 the problems are coming over here, and they're coming over here, and they're coming over there. And people will say, well, you know, you made your bed hard, buddy, now you got to lay in it. That's not a scripture. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> financially. Oh, so many people have messed themselves up financially. Whew. Playing big shot. Doing dumb things. Over committing. Being led by the flesh. Not listening. Got, you know, paying interest up, you know, over their head and and just and then some things happen and, and less money coming in, but the bills didn't slow down and and just missed it. And sometimes people say, Well, you know, the devil, the devil, the devil. He just laughed while you did it to yourself. Oh, he was me might have dangled a carrot here and there and maybe some incentive, but but no, he you know, don't give the devil too much credit. He can't make you do anything. He, he can't come in your life and man, he only, can only do what we allow him to, to do. That's why the Bible said, give him no place. No place. 
But there's been times that Phyllis and I messed ourselves up. Particularly years back, man, oh, we, we messed ourselves up in some situations. But I learned something. <laughs> I learned to come in and put my nose in the carpet and admit it and say, Lord, you tried to show me. You tried to tell me, but no, I, I had to do it. I had to sign my name, put my for them 830 easy payments. And, and, and I did this. And I, and Lord, I, I did it. I messed up. I didn't listen to you. But Lord, I'm asking you, have mercy on me. Please, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Now, you've got to admit you messed up to even open up your heart to ask for mercy. Take responsibility for your own mistakes and your own stupidity. Huh? Come on, fess up. Not, not to me necessarily, to, to the Lord. Get, get on, the, on, on your face like I'm talking about. To Him. Tell Him. Say, Lord, I, I messed up. I didn't listen to you. I didn't do what you told me to do. I yielded to my flesh. I listened to other people. I, uh, but that doesn't mean you're stuck. Any more than it meant you were stuck because of Adam and Eve's sin and your sin and being lost, that you were stuck and had to go to hell. No. No. Mercy. And if he'll have mercy on something like saving you from hell, why wouldn't he have mercy on getting you out of your little debts and problems and and healing your body? People say, yeah, but I did all this stuff with, and I got all these diseases in my body because I did this and I abused that and I abused that. Mercy! 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 He is the Father of mercies, plural. Somebody say, I believe in the mercy of God. I trust. In His great mercies. mercies. Do you? No matter how stupid, no matter how stubborn, no matter how sinful, you can still be healed. You can still be restored. You can still have your debts paid off and your needs met. You can still have a good home and a good marriage and a good family. You can still have a good life. You can still be used of God. Do you believe it? Say it out loud. I trust trust in His mercies. So they're at at the house of mercy. And there were a great multitude. Now this is not just 20 or 30 people. In fact, this could be more than hundreds. This could be thousands. A lot of people. All around this pool. Why are all these people sick people? They come out there. You know, you don't necessarily feel good if you're sick to drag yourself out to a place and stay there all day and drag yourself back. Why are they all out there? Because people have been healed because something supernatural is happening at this pool. Now, This bothers some folks. It seems strange, mystical to them. But you either believe the Bible or you don't. And we see angels involved. And I feel impressed to speak about this tonight. Angels. We just read the book of Revelation. You see any angels in there? <laughs> Just yeah. almost every chapter. Yeah. Angels. Angels. Look, look at the text again. It says a great multitude of people were there. Blind people, halt, that have to do with lame and withered, uh, waiting for the moving of the water. Everybody say waiting. Four, verse 4 gives us insight into what, what was happening. An angel went down. Somebody say an angel. an angel. An angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. So people, the, the water would be, the, the pool would be calm 
Everybody would be sitting around this pool, maybe for hours, maybe it had been three, four days, two weeks, I don't know. But then with no wind, the pool would start moving. The water in the pool would start moving with no wind. Nothing is moving it. And we know from Scripture what was moving it. What was moving it? An angel. An angel of the Lord would come down at a certain time. And I don't know if he stirred his foot in it. I don't know if he moved his arms in it. Or if he had wings and he moved his wings through it. Or if he just flew over it close to the speed of sound. (laughs) And created a wake. That kind of appeals to me. (laughs) It doesn't sound... You know, so radical, but but it was just moving. The, The water was moving, and the Bible tells us it was the presence of a being that you could not see with your eyes, an angel. Have you read the Scriptures enough to know that there are angels all through this book? Are there? Old Testament. Psalms, prophets, New Testament, gospel accounts, book of Acts, all through the Bible, angels, angels, angels. Now, I don't claim to know a whole lot about angels, but I can observe this. It seems like a lot of people get in the ditch on one side or the other. They either uh, don't you know, want to talk about angels at all, or they talk too much about them. And it's an an unscriptural emphasis on angels. Some people, bless their heart, it's angels, 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 and they got 12 angel statues in every room, and and angel stickers on their car, and, and, and they really think and talk more about angels than they do Jesus. And that's not good at all. But then people in the ditch on the other side, and, and they don't even like to think about an angel or talk about it. It's spooky to them, and, and, and they don't know if they even believe in such a thing. And that's not good either. We should get in the Word and, and believe what the Word says about it and stay with what the Word says about it. Go to the book of Hebrews, please, the first chapter, and let's look at some Scripture along this line. The Bible said an angel would come down and he would trouble the water. And then whoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatever disease that he had. Now, you could jump in the pool at other times and not be healed. But the first one that jumped in the pool when the water was troubled... Got healed. It didn't make any difference if he uh, had incurable cancer or an ingrown toenail or anything in between. Whatever he had was healed when he hit the water. Which means there was more in the water than just water. There was an angel in there. And obviously the angel brought with him some healing. Are you all with me? He brought with him some healing. And, the, and, and when the person jumped in, he ministered that healing to that person. And they were healed. I know this sounds strange to some folks, but it ought not. It's sad that this subject is so foreign to most of the church. I, I perceive we need to meditate on it. We need to be taught on it. Stir ourselves up. Because I believe there's a whole, well I know, there's a whole ministry here of the things of God that we haven't been receiving fully. In Hebrews 1, are you there? Hebrews 1. The scripture is talking about Jesus and angels. Hebrews 1. Verse uh, 
4. It says, Jesus being made so much better than the angels, as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, You are my son, this day have I begotten you, and again I'll be to him a father, he'll be to me a son. And again, when he brings in the first begotten into the world, he says, Let all the angels of God worship him. And of the angels, he says, who makes his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. So he's emphasizing how that Jesus is glorified above all angels. And that never was their instruction to worship an angel. But the angels are all told and everybody else to worship Jesus. Worship him. In fact, you don't have to turn there, but in Colossians, if they'll put it up on the screen for us. Uh, let's see. Colossians 2 and 18. 2 and 18. And let's look at the NIV on this. Colossians 2, 18, NIV, if we can find it. It says, Do not let anyone who delights in false humility and the worship of angels disqualify you for the prize. Let's stop right here. You'll see a connection between people who talk too much about angels and a phony humility. This helps you identify this. Don't let them uh, disqualify you for the prize. Such a person goes into great detail about what he has seen, and his unspiritual mind puffs him up with idle notions. They, they go on about their experiences and their visions and their revelations. Verse 19, he has lost connection with the head, from whom the whole body, supported and held by, together by its ligaments and sinews, grows as God causes it to grow. Jesus is the head. He is everything. Not angels. We worship Jesus. Right? We shouldn't talk about angels too much. We shouldn't focus on... You don't pray to angels. And you don't worship angels. Say that out loud. Don't pray to angels. And don't worship angels. I want you to say it again. Don't pray to angels. And what else? Don't worship angels. Uh, in Revelation, hold, hold your place there in Hebrews. We're not done there. But they'll put this up for us. You, you just read it recently. Uh, Revelation 19 and 9. This angel was bringing this, this revelation to John and showing him things. And these creatures are so magnificent that they, uh, you see Daniel, you see John, who, how many understand John is not just a baby believer two weeks old. And he sees this being and he goes to worship him. Now, that lets you know how awesome these creatures are. And the Bible says, uh, th this angel is telling John, Blessed are they which... He told him, write this. And he did. That's why I can't, we can read it right now, because he wrote it down. <laughs> Blessed are they which are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, These are the true sayings of God. Now, let's just stop right here. The very word for angel means messenger. What is an angel? An angel is a being created of God that are his messengers. And he sends them with messages. And he sends them on errands. And he uses them to affect and facilitate his work and his things. And there's a lot of them. And they are active all over the place. Amen. Amen. And they are involved also in healings. In healings. I know I heard a, a, a woman re recounting her experience uh, recently. And she had died in the hospital on a, 
a, a table where they were doing some things to her. And uh, she had had some problems. I guess it was a, um, uh, a major vessel. Uh, and she was, she was bleeding out. And they, they were not able to do anything with it. And uh, she left her body. She died. They told her she was dead for X amount of minutes. And she was looking at her body from the top of the hospital room. And among other things, she said two beings in white came up to her back and did something in her back. Said they put their hands inside her body. Went right through the outside of her back, right into the and did something. And just like that, uh, the heart monitor began to beat again and she came back in her body and, and, and didn't leave. Well, that doesn't sound too far-fetched when you read these passages in, in the New Testament to where an angel comes down and gets in the pool and when somebody gets in the pool with the angel, they get healed. Something happened, didn't it? These things are real. The Scripture's full of accounts and situations where the Lord sent angels with a message and sent angels to minister a specific thing. Uh, where are you holding your place? I was reading to you Revelation. I'm not ready to read Revelation to you. Put this one up while, while we're talking about this specific thing. Uh, Luke 22:42. Don't turn to this. You, you just hold Hebrews. Luke 22, 42. Jesus, in perhaps the most pressing hour of his life before he went to the cross, as he was about to go to the cross, he said, Father, if you're willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but your, yours, your will be done. Verse 43. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven and did what? Now this was the, the, the point where he began, blood began to come out of his pores. Hebrews tells us he was resisting sin. He was tempted not to do this. And it's not just a matter of tempted not to go through the physical pain of the scourging and the cross. As terrible as that was, that wasn't the worst part. The worst part was what would happen spiritually while that was happening. All the sin and every ugly thing of every human being from every generation past and future and the judgment for all of it was going to fall on his sinless, spotless spirit. And he, he, that's why he's praying, if there's any way, let this cup pass from me. And the temptation and the pressure was there. And in that hour of tremendous pressure and, and, and temptation, an angel sent from heaven. Yes. Are you listening to me, friends? Yes, Came to him and ministered to him personally to and spiritually. How did he do it? I don't know. But he strengthened him. Daniel talks about this. Daniel saw an angel and was so overcome with this. Of course, Daniel wasn't born again either. (laughs) And and he just fell out. He said, I was like a dead man. I couldn't pick my hand up. I couldn't talk. And, And he said the angel touched him. And when he did, he was able to get up and talk. Well, that strengthened him, didn't it? So it's not far-fetched to think that maybe this angel touched Jesus some way or another, ministered to him, but the result was that he was strengthened. Can God use angels to minister to us strength, healings? It shouldn't be a a thing thought strange to us that in times of need or duress, we might just feel like somebody put a hand on us and immediately are, are, are stronger and are better. Somebody, it feel like somebody came in the room with us. Are you with me now? Yes, sir. Now that doesn't mean you, you start praying to angels. Right. Or that you start worshiping angels. Uh, back, you hold your place there, but let me go back and read the verse we, we didn't read in Revelation. Revelation 19. 
and 9, that angel had told him that, Revelation 19 and 9, and when he finished and said, these are the true sayings of God, verse 10, John fell down at his feet to worship him. He must have been an amazing creature for John to do this. And the angel said to him, see that you do it not. Don't do what? Don't do that. This awesome, amazing being, what did he tell John? Don't do this. Don't do what? Don't fall down at my feet. Don't worship me. I am your fellow servant. And of your brethren that have the testimony of Jesus, worship God. How much clearer do you need it? He said, don't worship me. Awesome being. Right from the presence of the Almighty, right from the throne, came and appeared to John. Is telling him things that are going to unfold in the plan of God. And he finished up and saying, these are the true sayings of God. And it was so amazing and glorious that John just fell on his face. And the the angel said, don't do that. Don't do that. I am a a servant with you. And of your brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. You don't pray to angels. You don't worship angels. Worship God. Everybody say, worship God. God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Thanks be unto God. Somebody say, thanks be unto God. In Hebrews 1, let me finish with this. Not finish this, the service. Finish the thought. Hebrews 1, verse 7 had said, He makes His angels spirits. They're not flesh and blood like us. Doesn't mean they're not real. They're spirit. And there are His ministers a flame of fire. Down to the, the 13th verse. He's talking about the the, the, the superiority of the glory of Jesus to any angel, any created being. He said, To which of the angels said he at any time, Sit on my right hand until I make your enemies thy, thy footstool? What's the answer to that question? None. Nothing like that was ever said to any angel, but it was said to our Lord Jesus. Are they not, the angels, are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. That's you. That's me. That's us. The NIV says, Are they not, are not all angels, ministering spirits, sent to serve those who will inherit salvation? The New American says, Are they not all ministering spirits, sent to sent out to render service for the sake of those who will inherit salvation? To render service, to minister to and for. This needs to become more real to us. We need to be more open to it. But we must not become infatuated with angels. Can we do it? Can we believe this? Can we be open to this? Can we have this in our life without going in the ditch? Getting off. These glorious beings are the servants of the Lord sent to minister to and for us. Well, we should cooperate with them. We should allow them to do their ministry. And their service. Can you say amen? Amen. Would it suit you fine for angels to work on some people in here tonight? Hmm? But see, we must have an environment of faith, not fear. 
Fear and unbelief it closes the door to the work of the Lord. If you feel a hand inside you doing something to your heart, don't freak. <laughs> Huh? Right. If you feel a presence, a supernatural presence close to you or around you, don't get scared. If you get scared and you get an unbelief, it can stop it. It can hinder it. You remember the angel came uh, to uh, Zacharias, John the Baptist. Uh, father and told him he said I'm sent from the presence of God and to tell you this and tell you that and, and Zacharias says how in the world is this going to happen mm-hmm. next thing he told him is well you ain't going to be able to talk <laughs> Guess why? well why because that kind of talk hinders this and this was so significant that it had to happen so uh, there was a uh, uh, the quiet is put on him <laughs> till uh, <laughs> till John the Baptist was born. As soon as he was, after he was born, he was able to talk again. So obviously, fear and unbelief hinders the moving of the Spirit, hinders the the moving and working of God's ministering spirits, His angels, the work of God. We we know this already, but we need to understand it as in reference to the angels too. They're not doing things independently on their own. They're coming with what they were sent to do of the Lord. And they're not not doing it in their own power. It's the Lord who did it. But He does it through the power of His Spirit, and He also uses His angels. You remember it was an angel that came and got Peter and woke him up and walked him right out of that jail. Right? Angels. All through the Scripture. And they are ministering spirits. Ministering spirits. Somebody say glory to God. God. Go back to John 5, please. Let's talk some more about this healing. Thanks be unto God. Thank you, Lord, for your holy angels. Thank you for sending them. To minister for us, to us, help us, strengthen us, quicken us. You know, I'm not, I'm not quite through on this. Go to Matthew 18. Then maybe we'll get back to, to that. Matthew 18. And verse 10. Matthew 18.10, Jesus is saying, Take heed that you despise not one of these little ones. For I say unto you that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. Everybody say, Their Their angels. angels. Talking about these little ones. What does their reveal and imply? A specific personal attachment. You know, our, our well-known, beloved 91st Psalm talks about his angels. Said, uh, they've been given charge concerning you, haven't they? And as you read other scriptures, you realize they have been assigned to individuals. I'm not saying it's limited to that. But it includes that. Jesus said this in, in, in um, Revelation. Don't turn there. Just put this up on the screen. Revelation twenty two sixteen. We just got through reading it, didn't we? Revelation twenty two sixteen. Jesus said, I, Jesus, have sent my angel. Now, I think sometimes we've thought of that in reference to, well, all the angels are his. No, I think it's more than that. Personal. My angel, he obviously is over all the angelic hosts. 
But there's also a personal reference here. My angel to testify unto these things in the churches. Now when Jesus said these little ones, they're angels. Is that a revelation that there's an angel assigned to this little one? Obviously. Brother Kenneth Hagin, my father in the faith, had some experiences with angels. And on one occasion, uh, he saw an angel and saw the Master, the Lord. And uh, he said, uh, this guy, he said, was big, tall, awesome. And he said, he was listening to the Lord, but once in a while he'd glance at him because he was just so imposing. And he said when he'd glance at him, he would open his mouth like he's going to say something. But when he looked back to Jesus, he'd close his mouth. And so he said it happened two or three times. He, he, he kind of glanced over at him and he started open his mouth and he looked back at Jesus and the angel would close his mouth. How many understand the angels know who's number one in heaven and everywhere? Do we know who's number one? And uh, so after the Lord had told him some things, he said, he asked him, he said, Lord, who is this fellow and what does he represent? He said, that's your angel. He said, my angel? He said, yeah. He said, didn't you ever read in my word? And he quoted this verse right here, that these little ones, they're angels. He said, "Uh, why would you think that you lost your angel just because you grew up? See, that's a presumption and assumption a lot of people make with no reason, no scripture. Why would you think that? A lot of folk need their angel more now than when they were little. (laughs) He said, your angel. He said, he has a message for you. So he turned and looked at him. And when he looked at him, he said, the, the angel began to say, I am sent. From the presence of Almighty God to tell you. And he told him this and that thing, and if he did this, how this was going to work out not to do this. Now that's a, a spectacular experience. That doesn't happen all the time. And don't seek it. Did you hear me? You get to seeking supernatural beings, the devil can accommodate you. And he the Bible said he transforms himself as a being of light. He tries to pass himself off as an angel. And he's not. Well, he's a fallen being. So no, if the Lord wants to do some of these things, uh, there are reasons why bigger so many times than individual situations. But you could receive all kind of help and ministry from angels and never see one. You don't have to see one or hear one to receive benefit. Of this ministry. And I'm just sure that the Lord wouldn't have us. Have me on it. And have you thinking about it tonight. Except he intended. That they're already here. And they brought some things with them. From glory. Hallelujah. Now if you scoff. And you say. "Ah, I don't know about all that stuff. Well you won't be bothered with it. Because you're not a believer in this. But if it's in the Bible. I said if it's in the Bible. Should you be open to it? Even if you don't understand it. Should you be open to it? You want what the Lord wants in your life. And if he chose to use some angels to minister some things to you. Then don't tell him he can't do it that way. You're not the head of the church. Right? (laughs) Hallelujah. Are they not all ministering spirits? Sent. Somebody say sent. Sent. They're sent ones. Messengers. Sent to minister for those who shall be heirs of salvation. We got help, my brother and sister. We have divine help. We have the help of the Holy Spirit. We have the help of the name of Jesus. And we have the help of divine beings. Holy angels sent 
to help us, minister to us, minister for us. If you believe it, say amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Now, back to John. The Scripture said, John 5, numbers of sick people gathered around this pool. Now, you know, if nothing ever happened there, and if nobody ever got healed there, all these people wouldn't be hanging around there every day. Something happened. And so, when the water moved, they knew, whether they know it or not, that angel's in the pool. And so, the first one that jumped in, after the troubling of the water, verse 4, an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. A certain man was there which had an infirmity, 38 years, 38 years is a long time. To have something. And this man is incapacitated to where he can't move on his own power, as we know from the rest of the passage, him saying he didn't have anybody to help him get in the pool. That means he wasn't able to move on his own power. Almost four decades. We know from reading the rest of the story, the man got healed. Is there healing for people? That have been suffering for decades. Maybe. Now he had been among those waiting. Out here by this pool. I don't know how long. How many months or years. He had been involved in what was going on out there. But still. Not healed. Friend don't be. Don't believe lies. Sometimes people that they prayed and prayed. Didn't get healed. Other people prayed for them. Laid hands on them. They didn't get healed. They went to this meeting. They went to that meeting. This one did that. And they got this special cloth and the special oil. And they did this and they did that. Didn't get healed. Didn't get healed. And so then people just come up and say, Well, I guess it's just not God's will to heal me. No. Wrong. 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 Not true. All it means is for some reason you hadn't received. Well, I'm doing everything I know. That could be the problem. <laughs> There's a lot we don't know. Hmm? But do not believe that God wants you sick. Don't believe that. Because that's contrary to the Scriptures and is contrary to His good nature and is contrary to His great love for you. If He would have wanted you sick, He would have never laid your sicknesses on Jesus. And he did. And he bore them. Thank you, Lord. When Jesus saw this man laying here, and he knew, he knew this by revelation, that he'd been a long time, well, 38 years is a long time, in this case. He said to him, Will you be made whole? Now, I can see at least two strong things in this question. Do you desire it? And will you receive it? Will you? Now, tell me a good answer to this question. (laughs) How long should you think about this? Will you be made whole? Do you desire it? Do you want it? Yes. Will you receive it right now? Yeah, will you? Jesus says, will you be made whole? So does he say yes? No. What does he say? He says, sir, mister, I don't have anybody when the water's troubled to put me in the pool. While I'm trying to drag myself down there, somebody always gets in. For I do, and they get healed, and the water comes down, and somebody always gets in ahead of me. 
This is very significant. The Lord asked him, will you be made whole? Do you desire it? Will you receive it? And he begins to tell Jesus why he can't get it. This has always been a problem. Why he can't get it? Well, I've been such a bad Christian. I've made so many mistakes. I've done this and done that. See, that's people expressing things the enemy has brought to their mind, give, always giving a reason why it's not going to happen. Why it can't happen for you. Now, it's quiet. People are looking at me right now. But I assure you, thousands have, of thoughts have come to minds of people sitting in this room right now, watching through these cameras, of why they might not be healed tonight. Maybe this. What about this? What if this? We don't know that. Could be this. Anything to get you to waver, to wonder, to question. I want to go over this again real slow. Jesus looks at you and he says, will you be made whole? Do you have a sad story to tell him? About how you cried and prayed, how you fasted for two weeks, and, and how your friends prayed for you, and you've gone through this exercise and that exercise, and, and you tried to get them to help you, but they wouldn't help you, and, and you tried to get this, and you tried that, and you tried... See, do you know what I'm talking about? People looking at me like, why are you talking... You know exactly what I'm talking about. People will talk your ear off. I've been doing this for decades. And I know from personal experience, people just like this guy, you say, okay, will you receive right now? And they go, well, you see what happened back in about 30 years ago? Uh, I, you know, I was going down the road and got hit by this truck. And, and then this happened and they took me and, and they said this hydrocorda uh, formaldehyde and, and <laughs> might work. And, um, and they tried that on me. And, Man, I suffered through that, and, and then that didn't work, and then I went to uh, Dr. Uh, Newfang, and, uh, <laughs> and we did this, and, and then, you know, Brother So-and-so, and they're having a meeting over there, and man, we prayed for 40 day and 40 night on, on this deal, and, and the Lord spoke through Sister Watchamabob, and, and she said, Yea, thus saith the Lord, and, uh, and my mysterious plan, and the answer is yes, yes, yes. 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 Now, I know this sounds simple, but then this is going on all over the place. Right. Reasons why, not for you, not right now, not yet. I'm not able, I can't, I don't have anybody. Jesus didn't want to talk about any of that, did he? Jesus said, get up! Into what rise means? Hmm? When's the last time you said rise? (laughs) All right, children, arise from your beds. (laughs) Yea, I say unto thee, arise, the school bus cometh. No, what do you say? What do you say? Get up. That's how we say it nowadays. Get up. Get up. Will you be made whole? Well, mister, you know, I've been living around here for a long time. And, and uh, boy, these, this water is troubling. This is really something. Now you see all these people around here. And uh, I, I don't know, I guess... I've been this what thirty eight years like this, and I've made a I made a valiant effort several times. And one, one time I was this close. I mean, I was, and then this old cat from over on the side, <laughs> Splash, he beat me, rascal! I beat me by I know it was under two seconds, and the Lord don't want to hear all that. He doesn't want to hear your story as to how hard it is and why it hasn't been working and why you can't get it. 
Because he didn't tell you that story. The devil told you that. The Lord never told you why you can't receive and how it's not going to work and why you can't get it and why it's not for you. That never came from him. What does he say? The man's telling him his story. And as soon as he pauses, Jesus says, get up. Get up. Get up. Get up and grab your little mat and walk. Yeah, but he can't. Yeah, but he did. Jesus said, get up. Come on, help me out, friends. Y'all, y'all need to help me just a little bit more. What did he say? Help me out. What did Jesus say? He said, get up, get up, get up, get up and take your bed and walk for me right now. Walk, get up. And come on, verse 9, verse 9. And immediately something came in him. Something came on him. The Word, do you believe there's any power in those words that were spoken? The Word came. He sent His Word and healed him immediately. He was made whole and he got up, he took up his bed and he walked. Do you believe this is not a fairy tale? This is not imaginary. This actually happened exactly like this. Somebody say, I believe it. I believe in the real God. Uh, almighty, all-knowing, all-powerful, all-loving, good God. And I believe He loves His people so much that He did everything that it would ever take to be done for us to be healed and made whole. And He sends us His Holy Spirit. He sends us His holy angels. He sends us ministry gifts. He's given us anointing with all prayer of agreement, laying on of hands, name of Jesus. Come on, are you listening? All these different ways to get us healed and helped and whole and delivered because it's His will. He loves you. You love your kids? You want to see them in pain? You want to, well, He didn't want to see His kids in pain. If you could do something about it, would you? He could and He did. You say, why don't God do something about it? He did. He already has. Oh, God, I wish you'd do something about this situation. He already has. He's already done it. Now it's up to us. That's like a lost person say, Jesus, I wish you'd do something about saving me. He already has. Yeah, but if he has, why am I still lost? Can you help them? Does Jesus need to come back and do something else for them to be saved? No, no. They need to believe it. They need to receive it. And the same thing has happened for our healing and every other good thing that we need, that we desire. Stand on your feet. Let's believe God tonight. I want us to sing that Jesus breaks every fetter again. I want us to release our faith. I'm going to lead you in a prayer here in just a moment. We're going to release our faith and believe the Lord to do miracles in our midst. And I don't want you just praying for yourself. I want you to exercise love in your faith. Pray for the person in front of you, behind you, whoever they might be, that the Lord would do for them what they need. And if we're all praying for each other and those not in the room, those watching by internet, TV, then uh, somebody's believing for you that's not dealing with your symptoms. And you're believing for them not dealing with their symptoms. Makes it easy. Remember the Bible said when Job prayed for his friends, the Lord turned his captivity. He got healed and delivered while he was praying for them. I want us to do that. Let's sing this. Don't focus on me. Don't focus on each other. Let's get our mind on Him.
follow me on it. So what, what key are we in? Go to G. Jesus breaks every fetter. Jesus breaks. your faith said out loud, Father God, I believe in you. You're real. You're wonderful. Nothing is too hard for you. I worship you. I worship Jesus. And I thank you for providing for me, for every one of us, all we need. We're asking you, stretch forth your hand to heal in this place right now. And to those watching by internet, hearing and listening anywhere, watching anywhere, stretch forth your hand to heal and that miracles would be done in the name and to the glory of our Lord Jesus. Do for my brother, do for my sister exactly what they need. We're asking you for it. We believe we receive it. Move in our midst in Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Come on, expect now. Believe Him to do it right now. Use your faith. Expect it to happen. Oh, 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 thank you, thank you, thank you. Sing it again. Come on, expect now. Use your faith. Expect. Jesus Christ.
Hallelujah. Close your eyes. Don't be a spectator now. Don't just stand and do nothing. Be very reverential to the Holy Spirit. Let your faith arise. Expect. Everybody say expect. Expect right now Him to do things that we asked Him to do. Oftentimes in services like this, the Lord has shown me some of the things that He's doing. And on occasion, I'll call them out. I wouldn't do it just off the top of my head. I wouldn't make things up. I wouldn't be a partner to a lie like that. But if he shows me something, I'll call it out. But just because I don't call it out doesn't mean it's not happening. He just shows you some things. Oh, hallelujah. Thank him for healing your brother. Thank him for healing your sisters. Healing people, not even in the building, watching behind a computer screen, thousands of miles away. Thank you for working a miracle right there in their bedroom, in their office, in their living room. Sing it again while you expect with your faith. Jesus We need to be very reverential and we need to be in faith and not be in a hurry. Big problem with our generation. Such a hurry. No time for anything. We need to wait on Him for a few moments here. We need to worship our God. Not think about what you're going to do after the service. Not think about what you did before you got here. Not think about your problems. Get our mind totally on our God and on our Savior and on our Healer. Don't look around. Don't be distracted. Lift up your hands. 
Lift up your voices. Sing hallelujah. I will sing. Worship you, Lord. 
Lord, I worship you. Worship my God, worship my Jesus. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. Worship Him, reverence Him. Oh, thank you, Lord, for loving us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, thank you for working miracles in our midst. Thank you for healing my brother. Relieving my sister, delivering my brother, making them free, free, free. in the congregation. Close your eyes. Be very respectful to the Holy Spirit. I believe angels are working outside this room ministering to our children. And then outside this building, away in other states and other places, healing children. Oh, thank you, Master. Thank you, Master. Let's thank Him for healing our children. 
for your mercy right now people passing by on the strip need to be healed need to know you in their cars everybody say Lord we ask you to minister to them gifts of healings miracles in their cars as they pass by Reveal to them your great goodness and your love. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Lord, let your glory, let your power expand from this place. Radiate out. All around, all around, all around, I will sing. Part of what, what's supposed to happen right now, already happening, if you would just close your eyes, reverence the Holy Spirit, is that the Lord would strengthen people, a quickening touch, a strengthening touch in the, in the soul inside, in the mind, and in body. 
The Bible said, as you wait upon the Lord, you renew your strength. If you get in too big of a hurry and you get antsy, fidgety, get in a hurry to get out of here, you'll miss something good. Don't do it. It is written, they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. So lift up your hands. Wait on Him some more. Minister to Him. Whoa, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah. I will sing. you come down to the front altar workers come down to the front stand along the front face the congregation Dave Kim you come too face the front hallelujah if you'd like to have hands laid on you to be healed right now just get up and come down to the front And these are ready to lay hands on you right now. The anointing will come. Jesus is the healer. Sing it again. Jesus prayed. Jesus prayed. Let on you come right on down. Don't come to talk. Just come, let them lay hands on you. Release your faith. Everybody in the congregation, reach your hands out toward these. Keep your faith active. Thank you, Lord. 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 Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus breaks. Jesus breaks. Every fetter. Jesus breaks. Every fetter. Remind the people up. the people up all along the front. One single line. Hallelujah. Everybody that's come down for hands, go ahead and line them all up. Line them all up. We're not coming to talk and share. You're coming to have hands laid on you to receive your healing. Oh, hallelujah. Every fetter.
to be delivered come right on real quick you don't have to explain a lot to them just just come receive man's not the healer Jesus is oh thank you Lord oh I thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you thank you thank you Jesus prays. Jesus prays. Every feather. Jesus prays. Every feather. Yes, he does. liberating our souls and minds delivering from addictions from vices from bondages fetters thank you Lord setting us free setting us free oh thank you Lord Someone's deliverance is here. You you've gotten mad, and you've you've been physical, angry, and and hitting, and you've felt so ashamed and embarrassed. But there's deliverance here. There's grace. You need to believe you receive it, and never say again that you have a bad temper and you can't control it. Just. Let's lift up our hands and believe with these folks. Say, I believe I receive. I take it now. In Jesus' name, I receive grace. I receive strength. I receive healing. Oh, thank you. Everybody stand back up if you would. Who's the healer? Tell me, friends. 
Jesus. Who do we worship? We worship our God. We worship our Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. It's not too late to come. I'm going to have hands laid on you. Come right on. Come right on. Healing is happening in the place tonight. given their heart to the Lord, given their life to Him, nothing more important. Let's all affirm or reaffirm our faith tonight. If you've never said this, say it with all your heart. And if you've said it before, affirm it again because you still believe it. Say it out loud, Father God, I believe in You. I believe in Your Son, Jesus that He died on the cross for me. I believe You've raised Him from the dead. He's alive again. King of kings. Lord of lords. Jesus, I confess You Lord over my life. Hallelujah. Thank You, Lord. 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 Praise God. The Bible says you do that, you'll be saved. If you really do it from your heart. We're going to be dismissed in a few moments. If that's the first time you prayed that prayer, you're watching by Internet, call the number on your screen. We want to rejoice with you. If... uh, you're in the building. Don't run out the back. Come down to the front uh, and tell some of these folks. And let us rejoice with you. And We want to let you know that we're, as a church, we're available to help you in your new walk with God. Now, the healing is not over. I believe some people will be ministered to as they sleep on their bed tonight. I believe some people will be ministered to as they get dressed and get ready in the morning. Do you believe in these kind of things? Are you open to it? We released our faith tonight. That doesn't mean everything happens or stops happening tonight. It's ongoing. I'm interested to hear what happened up on the strip. 
I know some things, you know, some of them we may not hear about. Some of them maybe we will. And uh, children being healed. Let us know if, it's, if that happened in your house or uh, outside watching by internet. Let us know. We want to rejoice. We want to give God all the praise. Give Him all the glory. Hallelujah. We'll sing. We'll go. Let the presence of God be in your car and in your house and lay across your bed. And if you sense a holy presence in the room, don't get scared. It's the Lord's angel of His presence, His Holy Spirit. He ministers to us more than one way. We're glad for all of them. We're dismissed as we sing.